visibility seemed quite a tall order. And when I talk to people then, they say, well, you know, you could do something like a cuttlefish. So these are really smart, interesting creatures. And they can change the pigmentation on their skin so they can blend into backgrounds and so on. So that's sort of invisibility. You've got glassfish kind of invisibility. And when it came to a high-tech solution, the best that people could come up with about 10 years ago was something called adaptive camouflage. And it's a really simple idea. It's you take a picture of whatever's behind me and you project it on, in front of me, basically, on screens in front of me or whatever, and that makes me look a bit invisible. And it turns out that Susumu Tachi at the University of Tokyo has made a real-world invisibility cloak. And you can, here's the cloak, they've taken an image of the scene behind this guy and they've projected it on the invisibility cloak. And actually, if you see some video of it, it's not too bad. It's not a bad old invisibility cloak. You know, I'm quite impressed. So, you know, muggle science coming along there, lots of military interest and things like this. But then, this chap enters the scene. This is Sir John Pendry, and he works in an office a couple of hundred yards away from my office. And if I wanted to nominate someone to be the Albus Dumbledore of Muggle Science, this is the guy, because he came up with a mathematical scheme for invisibility. In fact, there were four different, within the space of a couple of years, four separate groups of mathematicians came up with schemes to make things invisible. <coughs> now, I'm going to give you... <coughs> bit of a hand-waving explanation, and if it makes your brain go pop, don't worry, because it's quite complicated, but let's have a quick go to try to explain to you how this invisibility cloak will work. This is actually one of Sir John's slides, and it's not as terrifyingly difficult as it looks. The thing to remember is something called refractive index. Now, if you put a spoon into a glass of water, you'll notice the spoon will bend, and actually light, when it goes from air into water, it bends, and the amount it bends depends on something called refractive index. Everything in nature has got a positive refractive index, but if you can make things with a negative refractive index, you can make things invisible. Now, the other thing that's interesting is this light bending uh, property can produce some very strange effects that are very familiar to you guys already. If you're on a hot summer's day and you look down a road, you often get this shimmering mirage effect. That's because you're getting hot air coming off the surface of the road the light's coming off these trees, coming down, and then it's bending up because of this refraction effect into your eyes. And so you're really seeing a sort of the light waves from this tree coming up into your eyes and getting the impression that you're looking at this, but only it's down here. You can see it here in a classic mirage where you, you think you can see water. Well, in fact, what you're seeing is light from the sky, from the blue sky that's bent by refraction into your eyes, and it gives the impression that you're looking at a puddle of water there. So light bending is, is very everyday, very real, very commonplace. So what Sir John showed is that you can make special materials called metamaterials with this property of negative refractive index. These are unnatural materials. You've got to build them to bend things like microwaves. They're, they're, quite, they're made out of big structures, big coils. To bend light, you've actually got to build a material almost atom by atom to do it. But you can do it. This is rather amazing. And here's a scheme for invisibility. So Harry Potter is standing here, and here's the light from the wall behind him. If you put a metamaterial around Harry, that will bend the light around him. And anyone standing here, they won't see Harry. They'll only see the light that has come from the wall. It's flowing around him, a bit like water around a rock in a stream. This thing is about the size of a pizza, and this is a real metamaterial designed to cloak microwaves. And so if your dad is trying to heat his butterbeer in a microwave oven, if he popped his glass of uh, butterbeer here and popped this whole thing in the oven, then the microwaves would just flow around it, it wouldn't get hot at all. So this is one form of real-world metamaterial that's got an invisibility effect. And what's amazing to me is we're beginning to get the first generation of metamaterials that can bend light. So you can have Harry 
in a cloak of metamaterial, the light's going to flow around him, so you're trying to see him, but in fact you see this character over here instead. And it's one of the things that you know, shows you how science can you know, move in a kind of explosive way. Ten years ago, this would have been impossible, and now, albeit at a very small level, we're beginning to build the first real metamaterial devices. Well, we're in the Railway Museum.